hello legends. So Anthropic just released two new Claude 4 models. They released the uh, Claude Opus 4, which is really good at coding. And then they released the Claude Sonnet 4, which I would say is the competitor to the GPT 4.1 that came out like a month ago. Uh, Claude Sonnet 4 is also very good at coding and it is very good at reasoning. And it's also very good at following instructions. The following instructions thing seems like it's a, like a much of a muchness, but actually GPT 4.1 um, in the documentation for that, they also say that it's you know really good at following instructions. So it seems like all these new models are converging towards actually behaving more like humans, like being able to read all the instructions, do some reasoning, think through, like create a plan, um, and then actually follow that plan and follow your instructions so that you have a more accurate output. So the new Claude 4 models are actually available both in the front end. So when you're in your chat interface, you can use the Opus 4 or Sonnet 4. And then for us, more importantly, because we're developers and we use a tool like NAN, it's also available in the back end via API. So over here, we've got the Claude Sonnet 4 and then the Claude Opus 4, and actually, thankfully, NAN is on top of it because they now flicked across those two new models, the Claude 4 models, directly into the brain section here. So uh, once you authenticate your account, which I'll show you how to do later on in this video, you can go ahead and choose from all the new models. So you have the previous models, the 3.7, 3.5, all the other uh, old goodies, but then you also have the Sonnet 4 and the Opus 4. So before we actually build this out, I actually wanna go back into the documentation, just speak high level about some of the performance metrics of the new model and also some of the features of the new model. Um, mainly because the only way we're gonna tap into the full benefits of Claude 4 is by uh, the system prompt. So imagine you've got a Ferrari, which is like, let's say one of the best supercars in the world. Um, the system message is the fuel that you're feeding into the Ferrari. If you give it the worst fuel, that's like the dirtiest, the worst possible um, process, processed fuel into your Ferrari, you're not gonna get the best performance. It will not be the fastest, it won't be the most powerful because the fuel is bad. But if you actually give the correct fuel, um, or in other words, the correctly formatted prompt specifically for that uh, Claude Sonnet 4 model, then you're gonna get the best experience. It's gonna be the fastest, highest performance, most power um, that you can possibly get out. And that's only gonna come from us actually understanding, firstly, what are the features and how to use them? And then secondly, how to prompt it. And I've got a hack to actually help us prompt the model. Uh, I'm gonna show you later in this video. So back in our documentation, we've got a table over here that compares the new Claude 4 models against the previous 3.7 and then the 4.1. I'm just gonna be focusing on 4.1, 3.7 and Sonnet 4 for this comparison. Um, and really, because we're, we're using this in NAN, we don't really care about the agentic coding or terminal coding. We really only care about the, um, the reasoning, the tool use a little bit, the multilingual Q&A, visual reasoning, and then this maths as well. This is really, really good. So if we're comparing the graduate level reasoning, let's say we have the uh, GPT 4.1 at 66%, uh, Claude 3.7 at 78. And then we've got two different uh, variables here, or sorry, two different metrics for the Claude Sonnet 4 and as well the Opus 4. Um, this is because one of the new features of Sonnet 4 is this advanced reasoning, advanced thinking um, that it does. So in the standard in the standard default form, it achieves 75% against the graduate level reasoning. If you do unlock that advanced mode, um, like the advanced reasoning, you're gonna get 83%. So between 66 to 83, that's a massive nearly 20 point jump. And between 78 to 83, that's even 5% jump as well. So that's pretty cool. Then we also have agentic tool use and the two different use cases they're ben benchmarking here are retail, let's say in e-commerce chatbot, um, and then also airline, let's say processing and putting through orders and tickets and seats like that. So it's relatively um, level playing field between the 3.7 and the four. Um, and then just a massive difference between the 4.1, like 68 to 80 and then 50 to 60. That's that's massive as well. Um, multilingual Q&A, it seems like everyone's on a relatively equal playing field, 86, 85, 83. Then we have visual reasoning, which again seems to be relatively well balanced, 74, 75, 74. Um, but then for the high school math competition, there's a massive difference. So the standard Claude 4 is at 70%. You get an extra 15% for the advanced reasoning. Um, and that's, you know, a 30%, you know, 30 point jump between the 3.7 to the four. And then it's like, I don't know why they don't have anything for 4.1. So maybe that means that 4.1 was either not tested or it's just, it's not good. Or actually, if it was tested, then it would be here. Maybe it's just not tested. So as we can see from this already that we can actually unlock um, higher performance by using the advanced uh, reasoning, which means that we have to prompt it accordingly to be able to think a little bit deeper about the problem that it's solving. Now, since we're using NAN, we do have some kind of guardrails that are put up around how we can actually prompt the agent and how we can actually build our workflows or our agents. Um, but in general, the benefits here between the advanced reasoning are going to be um, primarily from two different places. One is from the prompt that we're putting in, and then two, the actual model itself, the way that it works, will also be able to do this. So um, it's going to be like a 50-50 where we have to have a really good prompt and then we also have to let the model just do its own thing in order to get these good results. So the interesting thing is that um, actually in my use of the 3.7 model, I noticed that it was a little bit slow. Like compared to the GPT 4.1, the 3.7 was pretty slow. 
but the Claude Force on it is actually a lot faster than the 3.7. And it seems like from a few of these features that Claude's actually aware of that problem as well, or maybe not even a problem, they're just aware that maybe it's a little bit slow and they want to speed up the actual um, processing and they also want to improve the accuracy. So um, we have the ability to do extended thinking, which is super, super cool. So in the actual API, uh, when the model is doing some advanced, like extended thinking or advanced reasoning, it's able to execute, for example, different tools like web search during this extended thinking mode. In NAN, we're not really gonna see this because of the guardrails that are put up. It's like a visual drag and drop interface. They've got to have like their own infrastructure in the back end. But if you are like a vibe coder or you're you know, a developer, um, some of this stuff would be pretty cool for improved accuracy and speed. So this is super cool. Um, the new model also has the ability to run tools in parallel. Once again, we might not see this in NAN. Um, if you're a vibe coder or a developer, you wanna see me kind of experiment with this using just raw like API calls, um, let me know. But yeah, the, the cool thing here is this. So let's say the model has some instructions to follow and it understands that, okay, in order to get the answer for this question, I've got to fire off three different tools. Um, typically, if you have them sequentially fired off, you fire off tool one, you get the response back. You fire off tool two, you might forget there's an extra tool that you have to fire off. So you end it there and then you generate a response based on two tool calls. Um, that itself, firstly, is in, like less accurate than if you had all three tool calls. And it's also slower because you have to sequentially wait for one to be finished and then return. Um, what this means is that if you run those, those tool calls in parallel, well, you just have to do one execution, which is three tool calls at one time. And then your processing time is a lot faster as well because you're not waiting until one is finished before one can start. So this is super cool. It's very interesting to me um, that they're working on the speed of the model and the accuracy in this, this way. I reckon that's, uh, that's pretty cool. And then you also have four new API capabilities. So again, I'm not gonna dig it into this in this video, but you have uh, the code execution tool, MCP connector, which is pretty, a pretty hot topic recently as well. The files API. So this just means that the way that the model works with file uploads is different as well. Um, I think it actually caches the file or uh, it basically allows you not to need to update the file each time you have an API call with that one kind of conversational stream. So that's really good. And then you can also do prompt caching for up to an hour. So the way that you work with files and this prompt caching is super, super good for helping you save tokens. Um, and it's also good for speed because you don't have to rewrite those same tokens each and every time. They're already kind of like in the cloud waiting for you to use them. And like I said, if you do want me to kind of go in um, at a bit more of a backend level, like go in, make some API calls, check out all these new features of the API, let me know if you want to see that. That'd be really good if you're a vibe coder or you're a developer, or if you're just interested maybe even getting into that space, like you're mainly only using NAN, but you're kind of more and more interested um, in the backend of how these things work. Okay, but for us, let's actually go ahead and build out this agent. Again, the core focus that we have is uh, firstly, just plugging in the, the brain, the Claude Sonnet brain. Um, and then the second thing is actually building out the prompt for it as well. So let's go ahead and choose our AI agent. Now for our brain, I wanna be choosing the Anthropic chat model. If you don't have an account yet, um, or if you don't have this kind of connection established, just go ahead and click on create new credential. You are gonna to have to go ahead and create a uh, Anthropic account. So from these documentation, you can just go down to Anthropic console account, and this will take you to the, um, the backend, the developer account, um, because we need an API key in order for us to be able to use the Claude 4 model. So if you don't have an account already, just you know follow that link, sign up, create your account. You will need to top up about five bucks of the credit um, in order to actually use the API. So unless you add some billing information and you know drop in five bucks, you won't be able to um, actually use the API key. Okay, so once we have that set up, let's go down to this API keys button over here and create a new key. I'm gonna call this test-2. Let's hit add, let's copy this key and back in NA and let's just paste the API key here. It's that simple. Once we hit save, we're gonna authenticate that connection. Green means that we're, we're good to go. And then we can actually just choose from our models over here. So I've got 3.7, which is my previous model that I was using, but we also have these two new models here, Opus 4 and then Sonnet 4. I'm gonna go with Sonnet 4. And now the next thing I wanna do, um, because we're gonna be using it as a chat interface, you could add some simple memory. Um, if you want persistent memory, that's not just used temporarily while you have this browser window, window open, like you actually wanna build a chat bot that runs 24-7. Um, you want to use this Postgres chat memory. I'm going to link a video um, in the description of this video for you like to set this up. But for now, let's just use the simple memory. Okay, cool. So we have the brain, we have the memory. And now for a tool call, I'm going to keep it very basic. I'm just going to use the think tool. Um, the think tool is native to Anthropic. So actually this model, the Claude 4 model and the 3.7 model, they, they understand that there is a separate kind of feature that they can use, which is called the think. Um, in general, the model will itself try and use this. Like if you're ever in the Claude interface and you kind of ask a question here and it's a, you know, a complicated question, you will see a bunch of little like um, thinking about this, thinking about that. Like uh, even in, um, if you're using like the O3 model in chat GPT, it kind of it spends tokens thinking about things. Um, now, the way that it works in this interface, like the chat interface, 
is a lot more sophisticated and complicated um, than how we're actually using it here. Um, so we do get a bit of the benefit of actually doing the uh, deeper reasoning, the extended thinking um, by using within NAN like this, but it's important for us to actually tap in different tools like the Think tool um, and also to, to really get the prompt going properly to really expose all the different features that we can get here. So um, yeah, within NAN, we can still get a lot of the job done, um, but it is a little bit more restricted. Um, but yeah, the result is it's, it's, it's heaps better anyway. Okay, so now the next thing we wanna do is actually go ahead and create this system message. So I'm gonna go to add option, click on system message. And now the cool thing is if you go back to your Anthropic account and go back just to your main dashboard, we've actually got this prompt generating assistant that we can just click on and now we can insert the, um, the high level general kind of prompt that we want or the system that we wanna create. And then Anthropic will actually create a prompt for us that's optimized for using it with Claude. Um, the other cool thing is that there's a little button over here that says this prompt will be used with models that have thinking enabled, which is actually what we have over here. So we have thinking enabled. I'm just gonna create a general sports assistant. So create a prompt for a sports assistant. I'm using the new Claude 4 model with advanced reasoning. Please use this deeper reasoning in responses. And I've got this selected that I am using the think tool as well. And now Anthropic is gonna create a prompt for us that's um, tailored to actually using with the Claude models. So we've got all the instructions here. Um, it's actually fantastic as a starting point, even just to test your agents. Uh, we can just highlight all of this, copy it, and then back in our agent, let's just backspace this and paste it in. Let's open it up and kind of go through. Uh, so we've got some variables here. So well-reasoned responses to questions about sport. Uh, let's just say swimming, that's the one that I want to use. Okay. I'm gonna use swimming there as well. So when responding to the question, follow these guidelines. Begin by analyzing the question in depth. Consider multiple angles, historical context, current trends, and potential implications. A um, bunch of different steps that we have here. Uh, touches on controversial, debatable topics about swimming. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Maybe I could have just said um, swimming instead of sport. And then the question. Okay, so actually um, GPT 4.1 and also Claude, when you're prompting, they uh, the actual prompt guidelines, like the prompting course that they give you, says to use XML tags. This is an XML tag. Um, for, to denote the start and the end of dynamic variables that you're putting in. So this question is just a user question that we're gonna be inserting, but I'm not gonna use this variable here. I'm just gonna be using uh, actually this variable here. So uh, where is it? Prompt for the user message is just using the chat input. So we can actually speak with this model. Um, so for us, I'm just gonna backspace this because we don't need it. Provide your final answer within these tags. Include only the detailed answer to the question, omitting any extra commentary or repetition of these instructions. Okay, so let's give this puppy a whirl. So let's open up this chat and let's ask, who is the best freestyle swimmer? Uh, okay, so right now we just fired off. We added some, um, we added the question that we had into the simple memory just so we can have context of the conversation. And we're firing off hitting the Claude Sonnet 4 model. Uh, we used the Think tool as well, which is super cool. Um, once again, the prompt, all we have to do is just select that we have the Think tool enabled. We didn't have to explicitly write any additional instructions for ourselves. Um, and let's actually just wait until the execution stops and just go through all these logs. Uh, so we have the simple memory. Okay, that's just adding the message into our temporary storage. The anthropic model, this is just the prompt that we're sending in. And now the Think is actually really cool. So because we are, we are using the Think tool, um, there are gonna be tokens that are consumed that we don't actually see. Um, when we're within NAN. If we were just in a raw API, we could actually pull out all the tokens that were consumed and all the thinking that was consumed. But within NAN, we're really only seeing kind of the front end uh, token consumption. So we're really only seeing the final response that we get from the model um, that's input into this uh, chat interface. And then we're only seeing the temporary thinking that it's doing while it's hitting this think tool. So it's still pretty cool. Um, I'm sure in the back end of the actual API, there's a lot more stuff going on. But we can see from the Think tool that it actually has a totally different set of tokens uh, and a totally different thought process to what is actually responded here. It's not like it just copied this entire thing and plugged it into its thinking uh, mechanism. It actually had a totally separate conversation with itself, um, which I think is fantastic. And that's one of the reasons why this model is more and more accurate. Um, so it's a complex question to determine who is the best freestyle uh, swimmer. We need to consider multiple different angles. So it's kind of building out its own criteria of about five or four or five different um, metrics that we could possibly use, then it seems to be here looking at the uh, split between the male and the female uh, freestyle swimmers. And then it's like, I should analyze different categories and provide a nuanced answer rather than picking just one person. Okay, so that is pretty cool. And then on the front end, the tokens that we see here are um, basically saying, yeah, we should actually analyze this in multiple different dimensions of excellence rather just, than just focusing on one specific point, which is pretty cool. We've got the distance freestyle excellence and some information here, sprint freestyle, historical context and versatility, 
analytical framework for best. So this model is, I mean, in general, I think for um, for reviewing information and just that deeper, like the deeper thinking, like even around some of this stuff here, like this graduate level reasoning, um, like hopefully in that scenario that we just built, we're kind of tapping more into this 83%. And that's what I really like to see. I like to see that the model is doing some deeper thinking, deeper consideration. Um, and I think just, you know, saying that we want to look at it from multiple dimensions, not just be constrained to one single dimension is super, super interesting. And the reason that I did use a very basic prompt, like saying, you know, make this a sports answering assistant is because I really wanted to test exactly like what it would do with that very basic prompt that we put into Claude or into the Anthropic console. Um, we've got a very well-rounded answer. Like you saw, it probably took us 20 seconds to write that prompt and then, you know, get it gener generated for us. But we've got a very high level, sophisticated assistant helping us answer these questions. Now, the other cool thing is that if we actually were to introduce more tools into here, so if I just move some of this stuff around, if I put other tools into my AI agent, like let's say I made a HTTP tool and I called this web search, I could just copy this name, hit rename here. And now that I have two different tools that I want to use, let me just clean this up. If I want to edit the prompt, I could just go back into the prompt that we initially created, uh, press back, and then I could just say, this agent also has access to the web search tool, use this tool to answer questions about X and Y. And then I can hit generate. And then when this model generates the, the updated prompt, it's going to be able to also reference that tool. I just didn't give it enough information over here. Um, so didn't really know what to what to do with it, I think. But yeah, when you're generating the prompt using this mechanism, like using this generate uh, prompt feature, you can actually introduce all the different tools that you have. Just be descriptive about like this tool is used for X, this next tool is used for Y. And then the prompt is going to include um, all your tool calls, all the deeper thinking, all the reasoning stuff that you want to do automatically generated for you. And then all you need to do is just paste it into the system prompt. You don't have to worry about anything else. And it's it's literally going to be already using all those tools. Um, so that is probably the fastest, the easiest way um, to get started with creating prompts for anthropic models, so like Claude models. And yeah, I hope it's a nice hack that you guys can also use to start building your agents a little bit more effectively. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I wanted to focus more on the technical aspects of the new model and how to take advantage of it using these system prompts versus actually building out a complex workflow. But if you want to see more complicated workflows uh, or if you want to see some kind of backend um, API calls of me exploring all the new features, uh, yeah, just drop a comment below. All right, guys, enjoy your new anthropic agents.